I'm here to tell you a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to tell you is agricultural development has got absolutely nothing to do with agriculture. And what I want to tell you, we are all here about change in agri agriculture, and we're all concerned about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and tell you how to do it, how to hack agriculture and food, and what is it that we can do to change it. Now, the first reason we need to know why do we need to change agriculture. Now, the first reason is the environmental impact of agriculture is significant. And that impact, 30% of all our emissions, is tied to a very specific production regime. Let's call it conventional agriculture. This has important implications. It means, first of all, we cannot grow more food or produce more food if we bring new unused lands into production. If we produce new food on new land, we will increase the emissions so much that we'll probably move the climate into a tipping point. So we have to change that. The second reason why we need to change agriculture, because it's an extremely extractive economic system. Agriculture is based, or modern agriculture is based upon what agricultural economists would tell you, is uh, to in increase food production, we need unfettered competition with no limits on resources. Now, first of all, there are limits to resources. Second of all, there is no free competition. Competition is highly constrained these days. The second reason why we need to change agriculture is the way in which agriculture and food science intertwine to recreate our diets. Now, this started in colonialism. Colonialism introduced food in order to oppress certain peoples. And by changing what people eat and what they grow, they were subjugated. This tied up with food science, which changed our cuisine into technical energy-based foods. So these foods were created in cahoots with an agricultural system which was really captured by commerce. The science of agriculture is captured by commerce. And this has created a system which neglects our cuisines and creates a form of agriculture which is extractive, environmentally negative, and it, this needs to change. We cannot just change it by growing more food because we will use the wrong ways of growing food. So what we got to do? We have to start a religion, a, a, a revolution. <laughs> well, maybe we should. So <laughs> what do we have to do? There are three drivers of real change in agriculture, for real sustainable change. And these three drivers start with the first one. Small is beautiful. It's much easier to increase your yields if you reduce your size of production. The second driver is very important. Biological is better. Biological systems can outperform industrial systems of production. They are just knowledge intensive, they are harder to implement, but this is what we need to understand. The third driver is very important because we need redistribution to happen, wealth redistribution through agriculture. And this is, this is the following. Dense social networks emerge around intensive biological production systems. These dense social networks are the means to not only redistribute wealth, but also to re-coordinate society so that we can create a sustainable food system. So that is what we need to do. And how do we do that? The first thing you need to understand is this runs along the concept of stakeholders. Now, almost everybody is a stakeholder to change. And we will all benefit if we change for the better. So what you've got to do is you have to get the stakeholders to change in one room. And you have to tell this community that you are now able to change your food system. You ask people, where do you want to be when you solve all your problems? in five years' time. People don't come and talk nonsense. People give you realistic assessments of how they can change their community and what they can do to change the food system. You do this with people and you enable them to create the path to reach that goal, and they will do it. And I've done it a lot, and I want to show you how to do it. So the first thing you've got to do is 
You've got to get the stakeholders together because they want the change and they will come. The second thing you need to understand is you have to facilitate that discussion because we talk a lot and a lot of it is not nonsense. And it is important to create the conditions so those in, in the room and in society who would never meet, they need to meet to create this change. We must understand that innovation will only come from diversity. And the more diverse a community is, the more innovative its practices can be. And we need to change a lot with changing the food system. So we need to actually get together very diverse groups of people into the room. You can use facilitated methods to structure the whole discussion. And we do that around about once a month in Soweto at the Isendabo Zokudla Farmers Lab. In this lab, I bring together different people, mostly urban farmers, but all kinds of different people, so that they can create new relationships that can create new patterns in society that will eventually create the new enterprises that we need to trade, produce, and distribute food in a different way. These labs are safe spaces where you can do anything, where you can say something radical and crazy. And the safety of being able to say something really crazy enables us to, to generate and think of different ways to produce. Now, when people do this, I mean, you must hold an event, have a party when you want to do this. When people speak in front of others in a public sphere, it produces ethical action. People don't lie in front of others. And it's really important because if you have, okay, only some of you, okay? <laughs> and please be quiet, it's my turn now. <laughs> so what happens is you create a safe space where the people can act with integrity. If that happens, people can start understanding what is at stake in creating a new food system. Because we need to understand, we need to coordinate quite a lot of things in order to realize such a sustainable food system. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create new materials and uh, knowledges about a sustainable future. The way you do that is you layer different knowledges on top of each other. In Isandabas or Kudla, we've con developed a peer-to-peer -peer learning system and a peer-to-expert learning system. When a new idea comes to the lab, we first get normal farmers to, to talk about this idea to other farmers, often in Sesuto or Isizulu. In that way, we humanize the new technology, the new idea, the new enterprise. Then you follow it up with an expert to peer. When you juxtapose, those who have and those who don't have, surprising things emerge. You can see a Professor Mriki Berger with a storytelling pro, a, a project with a firm of farmers in Soweto. But when you layer these things together, you can retranslate the knowledges that are there and retranslate them for new concerns. You've got to just do this. You know, stop talking, thanks Ted, but you know, you've got to do this because it's possible to do these things. And you can see here's a, a poster that we created when we launched the seed libraries in Soweto. And there's about 10 seed libraries out there that does this. Once you can have a different knowledge and sensibility around uh, agriculture, people can form different kinds of groups. And the groups that you would need to form are groups where those who have and those who have not come together to create new things. What we have here is a beehive that was developed by the Department of Industrial Design at the University of Johannesburg in conjunction with farmers using participatory uh, technology development methods. And that's a pretty good beehive that is designed to be manufacturable in local situations. These kinds of technologies enable us to tell new stories and layer knowledges in different ways. Here we have a make your own and design your own irrigation system. You know what? People spend 20,000 rand on an irrigation system, whereas you can take a couple of pipes, connect it to a, a drum, and put a tap on it, and it works. The plants don't know where the water comes from. <laughs> so stop buying these expensive things. And this leads me to a very important point. Biological systems can be very, very productive. And the way it starts with, rotting biomass. We have forgotten that things that stink and rot is what creates fertility. So what you do is you dig a trench as deep as your hip 
into the ground. It takes two, day, two weeks to do that. And you layer it with rotting logs. And thank you, sister, for showing it to us. You layer this up to the top. With, up, up to the top will be just compost. And you have a very, very productive garden that will be productive for a decade. Now, why do you want to spend so much money on so much fertilizers and poisons, which that's where your profit is? And we are, really need to rethink the way we conceptualize agricultural development. It is possible to be very productive using biological systems. These biological systems are really great. But the key is to enable the value that is created with food production to stay in a local area. Because our whole globalized system is created to take something from anywhere to nowhere, which is the global everywhere. That can't work. Poor people are poor because their local areas are exploited. So enable people to capture the value from the growth of food in the local area. So what we are busy developing is smart, internet-based, linked to the internet of things, local electrified delivery systems that are coordinated for inform in information and communication technologies. The Kula app, which some of the people in the room helped develop, is an app that connects a farmer to distributors. You can download it right now if you want to, and it enables the farmer to control the value chain and what happens to his produce, and we can redevelop this app to include local deliveries based on electric delivery vehicles, which our technology station at the University of Johannesburg is creating. This enables a whole different food system. The next thing that we are doing is we are introducing the Apparate uh, social media, it's a Facebook for farmers, into South Africa. This has been developed by a professor in Germany, Norman Holtz, and he's in South Africa, and we have used the system to create full value chains from the farmer right to retail level. And the way it works is complex. We need to coordinate very, very complex different sources of knowledge, technical expertise, and all these things have to be coordinated into enterprises that can realize a sustainable future. Now, I just want to show you how that could look like. This is the African rainbow maize value chain that we're trying to uh, establish, and it looks like this. The maize is usually grown by Living Seeds, a private company in the Deer, which is linked to small farmers who produce for living seeds. This is linked to Slow Foods' Ark of Taste, which is a registry of all the indigenous and precious foods which we have almost lost. That is linked to Isandabo Zokudla's Farmer's Lab, which democratizes and popularizes this opportunity. The delivery could be done through Apparate or through uh, the Kula app, and it gets sent to an end-of-chain organic retailer who has promised us a fair value deal for the farmer in the value chain. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got two important things to do. The first is, we can construct a peer-to-peer -peer network that controls the means of production of food. Information and communication technologies, our cell phones, enables one person in the network to communicate with the whole network immediately, and in that way control the way the meaning and resources flow in the food network. This is really important because that enables small players to change the network and their entry and their, um, uh, the, the, the impact they can make through the food system. This is the food system. This is where the chances for corporate development lie. Corporations in the future might not be found in buildings like this, but corporations will reside on an information platform, call it your blockchain, where narratives of meaning create the product and the corporation. These narratives can be mobilized by marginalized producers so they can shape the product. I mean, millis is millis is millis, but a milli is not the same as a milli that's, gr that's grown by a small farmer in organic, ethical ways that's traded in a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network that brings the benefit back to the, the farmer. That is the product. And that is the opportunity we have. What this enables is for small producers to create value, capture the value in their local areas, use that value to invest in their own human development, 
And if that happens, that is when people themselves can address through their own enlightened and, and, and capable actions the issues of hunger, poverty, and inequality. Thank you.